Whoa. Well, Howdy folks and welcome to Coffee and Tools. Uh, if you're into woodworking or repairing cars, motorcycles, boats, planes, trains, I don't know, whatever. Um, <laughs> if you're into fixing anything around the house or you look into modifying your tools a little bit and stuff, this is where things get really get going these days and I keep trying to push the button on this one for you because I can't wake everybody up hard enough to you know, it's this is all uh, just some various stuff that I've had to make around the house for different things. And it's all 3D printed off a 3D printer. And this is a heavy angle bracket. I can stand on this thing, I can't break it. You know, it's, it's PLA plastic. Uh, a little caddy for an iPad for when it's charging. A centering device for when you're marking wood and you want the center on it. You put your pencil right in there and you mark it. Uh, another one was these little parts drawers, uh, 3D printed. You know, I, I just can't say enough about this sort of thing. And then this is, <laughs> this is an early version, but uh, yeah, this is actually a pocket hole jig with uh, pieces of copper liner in there to help make it work. It's not really a great functional item, but uh, for a cheap make-it-yourself pocket hole jig off a 3D printer, it's pretty neat. And all the measurements are stamped on the side here, so you can you know use it. And again, what 3D printed uh, collar for a uh, MIG welder system. Uh, this is for a GoPro uh, camera to uh, mount to a Pacific uh, tripod system. A pusher block system for the, using the uh, table saw. This is a spacer that I used for a special type of lamp problem that we had. A little business card holder even, just you know something really basic, really simple, stupid. And of course the angles for doing like framework and stuff where you're trying to pull corners together and you make this on a 3D printer and it allows you to clamp your corners in. Or, or if you want to go another route, uh, I needed an angle, you know, a little piece of angle. It could have been angle iron or angle aluminum or something, but uh, why buy, why bother it? You know, why bother buying that sort of thing when you could just print one off the 3D printer or a dozen or whatever you need. So I made a few. Uh, right now I've got a 3D printer running, running today. Uh, earlier this week I had a problem with the refrigerator that's almost brand new and it had a spacer problem with some parts that were on the racks in the freezer so I went ahead and I'm printing new spacers that will work better than the originals from the manufacturer and that's really where 3D printing really you know kicks butt but what we're here today for is to look at a new 3D printer that's new upgraded 3D printer wow hang in with me let's check it all out right yes Woohoo! So Longer makes some really good 3D printers. Uh, in fact, they've, they've sort of become a, almost, a, for me, a, you know, a mainstream of like, this is a really good printer. I haven't even seen it yet, but I'm, I know it is because I have their LK5 Pro. And it's a, it was such an awesome machine, I replaced an existing machine with it. Boom. Here's the difference though. This is the LK4, but it's the X. So it's like X for like extreme. It is now, I guess, the upgraded model from the Pro machine. The Pro machine was excellent, but this one has new, bigger, better features. And also, the assembly on this is supposed to be uh, really easy. They, you know, the box is bigger because the machine, there's just that much more of the machine ready to go. So to minimize the assembly time, there's a lot of features to cover in here. I have a list of them. So we'll go over the features, but first thing I gotta do is get this box open so we can see what's in here. Wow, so we got to unpack and I've got tools and a lot of goodies here. Uh, wow, uh, looks like a magnetic build plate. Yes, we'll get more into the features as we find them, but uh, i tell you what, I'm going to get the rest of this out of the box on the table here so we can see what we have because unpacking is, it, it takes time. Yeah. Okay, wow, I got it all out of the box, but here's the problem. Uh, this piece, I was going to lift it out first and set it aside, and I could not because it's already pre-wired to the base. So I had to turn the box on its side and kind of ease this piece and this piece out together because they're, uh, they're hardwired to, together for some reason. There's this magnetic base thing, which, uh, man, that is, <laughs> that is so cool. Look at this thing. <laughs> it's magnetic. That is... Wow, that's neat. I've never had one of those before. So that'll probably be the first feature we'll probably be running into on this list of features, but uh, it has some, you know, this is supposed to have some very nice new stuff that goes up and above and beyond. So 
Uh, obviously, we've got to screw this onto here. And we're pretty much ready to go, I think, at that point. Oh, yes. I uh, found the... This is the longer... Uh, this is the longer interface module, which I found in the box, nicely packed too. And it'll just be plugged in and it'll sit on the front of the machine here where we'll be able to run it from like a touch screen type thing. It is really cool. It's kind of like a cell phone, you know, you just sit there and touch screen and call up the programs that you need for when you run a 3D print. What an interesting, wow, look at this thing. <clears throat> the machine is just finishing up the auto leveling right now. but. Uh, I finished putting it together. I'll be honest with you, it took me well over an hour and a half uh, messing around. There was a couple of various, ran into a lot of different issues, and one of them, uh, the spring here uh, was missing, and also this bolt was missing. Now the bolt, I was able to find it in the box as a, a loose, strange part. So I went ahead and I put the bolt back in. Uh, we're still checking the box to see if we can find the spring for this thing. But in the meantime, I just I have a spring that I have laying around the shop here for parts. So I went ahead and put my own spring in just so we have that so we can get get rolling. Won't oh, finish. Okay. Now we just did the bed leveling. Now we don't have any files in here. So there is a file here for a benchy, but I'm not sure whether it's been uh, whether it's ready to go on the machine or not. So we're going to put it in the uh, TF card slot. Uh, I don't like this uh, monitor they've got up here. It's kind of loose, sloppy, lay, lays around, and the filament is on the back side of the machine facing kind of an odd situation. But, you know, this part here, probably okay. Yeah. Uh, I didn't like the way they had this cable strong, and it goes down back here with some plastic pieces to protect it. So I removed it completely and brought it out here to where I can tie wrap it or whatever off the side of the machine and bring it down out here where it's away from everything for the time being. Don't like the cable at all. Uh, just not happy about what the way they did with that. Uh, there was some other, like I say, other assembly problems, but let's talk about some of these features. Longer LK4X features a direct drive dual gear extruder with a five to one uh, reduction ratio and stronger and more accurate filament control and is compatible with PLA, ABS, PETG and wood also runs TPU which is very interesting because TPU is so soft it's usually hard to get it through the machines and it jams a lot so having a machine like this with a direct drive for TPU would be absolutely awesome. Uh, also intelligent auto leveling with 16 point exact leveling. I'm not going to say too much more about that because I've been trying to run with the automatic leveler and I've also done manual leveling leveling and I can't say I'm overly impressed it's like yeah it's the same old same old you know you've got to get your bed leveled really good or you'll never get a good print out of a machine out of any machine it doesn't really matter who made it uh, platform is a built-in premium spring steel that allows the simple filament adhesion to print to the bed without the use of adhesive which I've always been against using adhesive because any overspray ends up on the machine and over time it'll build up and just make a mess and shorten the life of your machine anyways and simply removes printed models by easier removing of the PEI sheet or you know I will call that that magnetic uh, sheet that goes on the bed the uh, bed right now that is a that's a nice item I don't have to have it but I do like it uh, also 95 percent pre-assembled as you saw it only came in like three parts and you just put it together and you should be up and running uh, the uh, longer also has now the, they have gone to the larger screen, so this is a bigger uh, touch screen service than the old one. In fact, this is a lot like the longer LK5 Pro, which is a much bigger machine, but I think the display is about the same size by the looks of it, so that was really a, a really good thing. It also has dual fan blower kit. The LK4X is equipped with uh, the filament that can be cooled quickly from the extrusion, and the model is so it won't be you know prone to de deformation or uh, wire crawling, you know, uh, enabling just better printing all the way around. Has a 32-bit open source silent motherboard, so that's a, that's a pretty neat little item there. Uh, you can resume printing if you run out of uh, you know if you run out of filament. It has, of course, the uh, you know maintenance there, so you can check the filament if it runs out. You can get back to working on it, and so you don't lose anything. Also, power loss consumption, same thing. If you um, uh, building size something and sufficient daily use, lower power consumption reduces energy use. It is uh, more power efficient than some of the other models in the past. So that's kind of a nice little uh, little extra, I guess. 
Also has manual belt tensioners, which I've noticed, and I think I pointed that out. That is really a good thing to have. And also the Teflon tube for less blockage up there at the uh, extruder. So the uh, Teflon uh, really is great for temperatures, but it'll it'll stop the you know the nozzle from clogging easily, that kind of thing. So overall, I guess you could say there is a lot going on here for your money. And also, there was a couple of other things I wanted to mention here, and that was to be also full guide rails for higher precision and more stability, 95%, oh, and the direct extruder. So the machine overall has some, for the price, it's, it's like a full featured machine for the price. So that's pretty amazing. Right now the nozzle's head, uh, yeah, heating up, so we should be making a benchy here shortly. So right now we're building the Benchy, the famous little boat, little looks like a little tugboat, and uh, it looks like it's uh, <clears throat> coming out perfect, anyways. But uh, it went through the auto leveling first, and then started making the Benchy. So uh, I don't know if that's something that it does every time you start a print. Uh, that's okay, I guess. It only takes a few minutes to let the machine make sure the bit is, in its opinion, level enough to make something. Uh, this is PLA Plus, which that's fine, you know, whatever. But uh, the uh, first off, the machine is fairly quiet, so that's a good thing. And the assembly, of course, was, it should be relatively easy. There was some weird snags uh, of uh, things with uh, screws and wrenches and whatever, the things that have to be adjusted. And if you're not familiar with 3D printers, the TF card shows you the assembly. And the video for the assembly that the TF card is supplied with is excellent. It, it has a, an excellent video that walks you through step to step to step to put all the different pieces together. In fact, I was looking at the video and I think the video was made with the older uh, LK4 uh, Pro as opposed to the, the new one here, the X or Extreme or whatever it is. Uh, I'm not sure what that X stands for. I don't think it's Roman numeral 10, but you know. Uh, Price-wise right now, I, I'm hearing through the grapevine, uh, I'm hearing about 279. Got to thank Zvanix and Zoe for sending this over to us so we could, you know, check this uh, printer out. And I love 3D printing, as you could see this morning. There's a lot. There's a lot of reasons for it. There are just so many things you can do around the household or repairs or anything. And you can draw something up and print it, and it's it's a done deal. Or you can customize or make something that doesn't exist in the world. You can make it on your 3D printer and have the only one in the world. <laughs> yeah, which is really a very cool, cool item. Um, let's see how the Benchy's doing. Benchy looks good. This uh, auto leveling thing I'm not used to. It's very different. It's, I guess you could say something new. I've also never had a uh, 3D printer with a direct drive extruder like this. And that, see I have no bottom tube. I don't have a step motor over here, that sort of thing. The uh, plastic, the filament is being fed right to the top, to the stepper motor, directly to the extruder, and the hot, hot end is immediately, you know, putting down the plastic for me. That is, I like that, it's a cool item. I've wanted it on other machines in the past, so uh, longer doing this on a fairly, relatively inexpensive machine is pretty neat. She has a lot of features, so if you're looking for something that can run a lot of different things and has the features, and the simplicity of that, I love that interface uh, control package they've got with that thing. It's like, man, that is just, it's awesome. It, it's just nice to have. This is the uh, panel information while it's running, and it gives you the temperature of your nozzle, the temperature of your heated bed. You can see the percentage of how much progress you've had on your project. By the way, before I forget to mention it, the build size on this one is 220 by 220 millimeter by 250 millimeter. And uh, yeah, just thought I should mention that. On the front side, you have a uh, port here for a printer cable if you, you know, if you so desire. This is a TF card slot. I wish everybody would go with full-size SD cards, but this is, this is what you see all the time. So really can't complain. It's just, yeah, another one. Yeah. All right, so we've made us a benchy. Uh, again, I, you know, no surprise, the, the benchy, I don't know where they got the file from for this one for longer, but yeah, that's one of the nicest benchies I've ever seen. And it just, oh yeah, the detail, there's no lines, no separations. 
little bit of hair right there, but uh, there's no hair, there's nothing hanging, the holes are perfect, the hull looks great, so obviously, good machine, you know, it makes a great thing. My favorite part of the longer is this right here. This control package is just sweet, you know. And you can even got a spot here where you can touch filament, and in this case, we're going to unload. And uh, it will now unload this so I can put this away so I can change color or just put this back up in storage. One of the better one of the better things about longer is just this whole interface is probably one of the best on any 3D printer I have ever used. And look at you're running all this without the laptop, without the computer or anything, but you have all this right here to work with. So it's like it is just that great a machine. But when you get these extra features in here, they've really tried to put together a, a really, you know, high feature package at a low price. Links will be provided in the description below where you can find and buy one of these. So, hey, at a great price. I think it'll be a discounted link too, so that'll be even better with a maybe a discount code. Yeah. That's it for today. So I'm out of here, but thank you so much for watching guys and subscribing and all that, and uh, over and out. Yeah.